Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm sure glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great show. Dr. David Welch from Berlin, Pennsylvania is going to be joining us today. And we're going to talk about the veterinary supply and sustainability of veterinary practices and some of the things going on with student debt as well. Stay tuned. Enjoy the show. We're glad that you're here. In this particular area of central Montana, we are a little copper deficient and with the use of multi-men, I've noticed in our hair coats of the cattle don't have that red color like they normally do with copper deficiency. We've seen less sickness in the, in the calves when we give our calves shots uh, at weaning. Calves seem to wean off better. We've had less foot rot in the calves after weaning. Those are the big benefits we've seen with, by using the product. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Dr. Welch, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here today. Folks, it's great to have Dr. David Welch here. He's from Berlin, Pennsylvania, and he is president of the White Oak Veterinary Clinic there in Berlin, and also he owns and operates White Oak uh, Consulting, which is a dairy farm business consultation practice. That's correct. And then for the American, so not that you're not already 100% <laughs> employed, but he also is the, the project director of the Veterinary Practice Sustainability Committee here at, at uh, the American Association of Bovine Practitioners. So appreciate you being here and, and spend some time with us. Happy to be here. All right, so let's get down to, let's kind of kickstart this thing. and 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 talk a little bit about what people are going on, you know, some of the things, the issues within the veterinary profession, uh, specifically towards sustainability. And I guess we'll start out with the student debt. Okay, a lot of people wouldn't realize, don't know this, but uh, veterinary education is a, an eight year venture for most people. They go four years to undergraduate and four years to graduate school, veterinary school. And uh, there's a lot of debt, education debt. It's, it's hard to work while you're in veterinary school and, and pay your way through. And so the average education debt in recent estimates is about $150,000 to $160,000. Uh, Ten years ago, the average education debt for a, a new graduate was $100,000. And during that 10-year period, starting salaries have stayed about stagnant. So it's made it a problem for uh, folks to go into practices. They have to take practices that are dollar-driven. They have to take the high-priced uh, job if they can get it. And sometimes rural practice isn't, doesn't pay as well as, as a small animal practice does. So that's one of the things that's uh, driving. Uh, the other thing is because uh, of the, where the veterinary profession finds itself right now in, in our economy and the livestock industry, uh, jobs are not readily available. So some new graduates are having a difficult time finding jobs in food and animal medicine in, in the, our country. Um, well, and, and you look at if we combine the, the increased tuition with decreased number of jobs, that's not going to help with the salary. That's correct. As yeah. well. And so it kind of is compounding yeah. um, the issue. Mm -hmm. A lot of the decreased uh, salaries and has to do with the changing in the livestock industry that's mm -hmm. going on. And so you're seeing larger herds which is not bad because large herds can be very well managed. But um, the individual animal's value has gone down a good bit. And so a lot of the jobs that are being, were, traditionally were done by veterinarians are now being done by technicians or herds folks uh, on the farms. And uh, so where the veterinarian used to spend a lot of time running around, driving around, treating an individual cow, he's more likely to be involved in the role as a consultant yep. and in that role. Yep. Well, it's time for us to take a break here. And when we come back, let's talk a little bit more about the changing of the veterinary profession, where we're headed, and, and some of the new things that we're seeing. You're watching Doc Talk, and we'll be back right after this break. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. 
and by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. In the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University here with Dr. David Welch, who's a veterinarian and he is the project director for the Practice Sustainability Committee at the American Association of Bovine Practitioners. He's also uh, owns a veterinary clinic in, in Berlin, Pennsylvania, as well as a dairy consulting business. And we're talking about business. We're talking about the veterinary business. And as we left the break, we talked about how the old model was you hired an associate veterinarian, you put him in the truck and said, go drum up yeah. new business. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're seeing is a contraction of the agricultural industry. So those new clients aren't out there. So as you were describing the service, if you can't find new clients, you got to offer more things to the same people. That's correct. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about the changing of the veterinary profession, not only in what we're doing, but maybe some of the demographics. Yeah. Well, as far as the demographics to start with, uh, whenever I went to veterinary school a good many years ago, uh, maybe 15% of the students that graduating were women. And now the ratio is reversed and maybe 10 or 15% of the new graduates are men. And it's estimated by the year 2030 that 71% of the veterinarians and will be women, and that'll be uh, true in our area, uh, food animal medicine. They, with the women, and even with, it doesn't matter whether it's women or men, the culture is changing, and there's, there's uh, the emphasis, their, their culture, their values have changed, and, and uh, so they're not interested in working like uh, the old old time vets did. The James Harriet, they aren't the James Harriet model is gone. Yeah. Uh, you don't drive around the country and treat the individual animal like James Harriet did. So uh, we have an older population, and, and you have uh, right now. There's a the AVMA study actually says the average age of a man is 60 years old, which I find find hard to believe. That'd be a male veterinarian. A male veterinarian. Wow. And uh, in our study of the AABP, it was 50. Uh, three years old. Regardless, you have older people who are, who are looking towards retirement, they're closer to retirement than they uh, are from just getting out of school. And they were trained traditionally and they're not trained to, to do the higher tech things. And so a lot of the uh, services that we're providing, if they are services, they're going to be high tech things. They're, you, you have to learn about 
the technology behind them and they implement them, and sometimes there's a big learning curve. You bet. Uh, like in vitro fertilization, you may take a course and for two or three months, and then you may spend two years before you get it down, how to make it work. Uh, ultrasound in cows, and, and so a lot of this new technology requires new equipment and requires new training. The other areas that we're, we're seeing uh, veterinary medicine go on is into business-related services. So we might be involved now in writing treatment protocols. We might be involved in writing vaccination protocols. Uh, we may be involved in ration balancing or, or doing enterprise analysis uh, for farmers. All these things are, are non-traditional veterinary services. Right. You need that very basic veterinary education in order to understand some of these things and, and do them, but uh, you don't you aren't trained in these these fields. Yeah, and, and when we come back from the break, we're gonna continue on with Dr. Welch and talk more about these services that can be provided by veterinarians. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. We're cow-calf producers from Northeast Colorado. We run about 300 commercial cows and calves and uh, sell them at the sale barn in October. Since we've been given multi-min, our reproduction rate is about 95%, which is pretty good for grassland, and we run bulls, and we do not AI. That means an extra 15 calves at sale time. We've been using the multi-min product for three years. We are really happy with it and recommend it to anybody in this business. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. David Welch, who's a veterinarian from Berlin, Pennsylvania. He also owns and operates a veterinary clinic and uh, a dairy consulting business. We've talked about the changing of the veterinary profession, and we're talking about sustainability of the veterinary profession, which you play a large role in, in as the project director for, for the bovine practitioners. Um, you know, as we change from being the, the bug and drug um, kind of veterinarian, I'm, I'm a third generation veterinarian. My mm -hmm. grandpa started our clinic in 1938, wow. and dad in 67, and then then I came along and so seen a lot of changes in, in the profession in, in our times. But where are we headed? What are some of the services? You know, we talked about food quality. Well, food quality, that, you know, that's, a, that's something that we have to do. It's just the right thing to do is to produce uh, uh, a good quality food that's drug free. Uh, we, in the past, we've re relied on too much on uh, antibiotics and injectable drugs in order to manage <clears throat> diseases and 
the veterinarian more and more is playing a role in welfare audits where he's going into a farm and he's assessing their uh, susceptibility areas in there and making recommendations about management to try to, so that through good animal husbandry we can uh, raise beef cattle and produce good quality meat and produce good quality milk and uh, that's uh, free of antibiotics and free of germs and pesticides or uh, uh, germs and uh, other bacteria. Right. Uh, you know, there, you always have these things you hear about in like salmonella and milk or salmonella and chicken or something like that. And you know, that's a big goal uh, is to to just to do things that are right animal welfare wise. Well, and I think that, that as we look at, you know, the, the kind of the three-legged stool of food safety, animal welfare, and environmental stewardship, you know, they, they're all three interrelated. Mm -hmm. and, and as you're well aware of the sustainability for veterinary practice, the term sustainability for these farms and ranches, without profitability, there is no sustainability. Exactly, that's right. And so the veterinarian is having to re-engage and re-identify themselves on what they can do to provide as a value-based service using the tools mm -hmm. from their veterinary education to help eradicate some of these, mm -hmm. these foodborne pathogens. Mm -hmm. and the Association of Bovine Practitioner plays a key role uh, in that we provide uh, these continuing education courses for uh, veterinarians on welfare issues so that they, they're trained and qualified to, to go out and do these welfare audits and uh, to aid in that, that supporting that three-legged stool there. You bet. Well, it's, it's important role that we, we all play, and, and we're up against a, a break now. We're going to have to take a break. But, but uh, I really appreciate you being here. Appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule and, and sharing it with us here on the show. When we come back from the break, we'll talk more with Dr. Welch. We're going to talk about uh, wrapping up kind of a bow tie around this veterinary sustainability and some of the areas that, that Bovine Practitioners is helping. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad that you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Purple Wave Auction, the easiest, most straightforward way to sell used equipment. Purple Wave, straight, simple, sold. I'm Katie Allen with K-State Research and Extension and got to visit with Dr. Jude Capper, who is a special guest lecturer here at Kansas State. Dr. Capper's research focuses on beef sustainability and the impact of the beef and dairy industries on the environment. The conventional beef industry has been sustainable and will continue to be because we know now far better how to treat our cattle, how to feed them, how to breed them, how to care for them every single day. So what that means is over the last 30 years or so, we use 12% less water per pound of beef, we use 33% less land per pound of beef, and the carbon footprint per pound has come down by 16%, which is a huge achievement on the behalf of the industry. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Hi, I'm Kevin Ochsner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. David Welch, who's from Berlin, Pennsylvania. He is the owner and operator of White Oak Veterinary Clinic and White Oak Dairy Consulting, uh, has a dairy consulting business, uh, and is the project director of the Veterinary Practice Sustainability Committee here at 
the American Association of Bovine Practitioners. It's been a wonderful conversation. Really appreciate your service to our profession. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we're changing. Yeah, we're going to see in the future uh, in veterinary medicine, we're going to start to see some newer models. Uh, some surveys we've done have shown that the larger practices are more sustainable. Uh, quality of life issues are better in those practices. But it also allows people to really become more specialized. And some of the services that, that the, the beef cattle industry needs and the dairy cattle industry needs, they need someone who is really specialized and well-trained in an area. And uh, so you can't be a jack of all trades now like you used to in the past. So uh, specialty is one area. New delivery systems is another area. It's just a, a way of interacting for the veterinarian to interact with his client. In the past, we used to go out and if a veterinarian went onto a farm and there was a bunch of sick cows there, well, that was a good day for the veterinarian because he could treat a lot of sick cows. <laughs> yeah. But you know what we want to do is get away from that and get into a retainer system where there's sort of a synergistic uh, value that's brought to the situation when the veterinarian goes out. So if the veterinarian goes out and he, instead of spending time treating a bunch of sick cows, he goes out and des, de, uh, designs some management situation or management protocols so that he can prevent those sicknesses that he was treating. Both then, groups are making yeah, money. Yeah, then it is a good day for the farmer and it is also a good day for the veterinarian because the farmer's making money and, and hopefully and, it would be shared with the veterinarian. And with what we were talking, it's a good day for the consumer. Yeah, it's a great day for the consumer <laughs> because we're trying to get, you know, most of these things that we're trying to do on a prevention basis or on a consulting basis uh, are going to reduce residues, reduce microbes in milk and meat and things like that. Well, it's, uh, I think that we're going to see a, a, a more services being added as we go along. Mm -hmm. Well, that's our role, and you know, the ABP is continually providing services, and uh, we talked about the ultrasound and the, the IVF, uh, but, and you have people that are, that are setting up labs and, and doing a lot of work that way. Uh, the pregnancy checks are being done with a milk sample or meat sample where they used to be done with a physical examination, so th th uh, that, and that type of thing is being provided by veterinarians, and just things are changing quite a bit. Well, it's hard for me to believe how much the profession has changed, uh, you know, even since I graduated. Yeah. <laughs> well, David, thanks a million for joining us today, and thanks for all that you're doing for the bovine practitioners. Okay, well, thanks for having me here today. You bet. Thank you. And folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk, uh, and thanks for, for uh, spending some time learning more about our profession, learning more about some of the things that we're going through, and some of the things that we're going to be bringing to producers in the future. Remember, if you want to know more about Doc Talk or see archived episodes, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. My name's Tim Todd, uh, along with my wife Chris, we own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Rygate, Montana. We've been in the Angus business for about 30 years now. We sell about 300, 350 bulls a year. We have a production sale in the fall, the third Friday in November, and we have a uh, private treaty sale in the spring. We've been using the multi-min product for about seven years now. Uh, we started using it uh, off the recommendation of our embryologist. He suggested that we give our recip cows a shot uh, prior to putting embryos in. Uh, we had a real good uh, conception rate that spring and we've been using the product ever since. Uh, this area of Montana can be a little deficient in copper. That's one of the three main uh, minerals in multi-min and so with that we brought our copper levels in our cattle up to where they need to be. We've seen an increase of uh, five to six percent in our conception rate on our, in our AI program. You start getting 30 to 40 more AI calves uh, in a year. 
uh, we're showing a, a huge return by using the product uh, in, that, in those regards. We give our cows a shot of multi-min pre-calving for the immune system of the unborn calf. She will transfer the minerals into the unborn calf through the blood system. When the calf is born, he has a, a high level of mineral in his liver, which will help with his immune system. Uh, in our particular operation, we uh, lease a lot of pasture, so it's real important for these cattle to stay healthy. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to, to check them like we'd like to. Uh, uh, the least sickness, the, the least foot rot we have, the better off we are. So uh, with the use of multi-men, uh, that's two of the big benefits we've seen. Healthier cattle, less maintenance.